Gaslights are us. Friends like you. <laughs> Gaslight are Actually, you should change my address up there to gmail.com. It'll be more oh. consistent and it actually works. Okay. <laughs> People kind of wonder why you why you put it your mind. So I want to spoke from that. Okay, so you want is it David that's in the group? It's the same, yeah. Okay. It's David that's in the group at gmail. And this is saving it in the Dropbox. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, we have to go through the beginning slides anyway. Hello, everybody. We are live. Okay. I'm Andy Malice. This is Stuart Bryant, and we are in Pals in Bangkok. And thank you all for coming. This is the note well, which I'm sure you all know well by now. So we have one item on the agenda, and that's going to be draft UC PALS PWCW stitching from Atala Busey, who was in the room a minute ago, and we expect him back pretty shortly. Um, since we last met, we, we actually did not meet at IETF 102. So since IETF 101, which is the last time we met, we've had one new RFC, um, 8339, which was PALS P to MP PW LSP ping. Um, and we've now had 18 RFCs, uh, um, published for PALS since it was reformulated in November, 2015. So we have been a pretty productive working group. Um, we have one item in the RC editor's queue, uh, draft IETF PALS Ethernet CW07. Um, the current status is that it's an auth 48, and uh, we just got the last sign off from the authors this morning. Uh, so we should expect to see it pop out from the RC editor into an RC pretty soon. You should already have the RC number. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we do already have the RC number, but we're we are um, um, sworn to secrecy until it's published. It makes the control word recommended. highly recommended, but not mandatory. Yes. Okay, and we have right now we have no other working group drafts. However, we do expect that to change soon. And that's it. Um, any questions before we get started with the Talos draft? Um, seeing none, let me switch over to a Talos draft. So given that all the chairs are authors, I'm in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that there's a flavor of transparency here. <laughs> there's a big controversy going on. There's a big what? Controversy? controversy. Yeah, I, did. <laughs> I started looking at the draft. It's like, oh, wait a minute. There's a lack of transparency in yeah. that. Oh. Yeah. What did you? Oh, it's much better in this one. Yes. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Yes, it's working. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, this is the uh, presentation. <laughs> it's discussing about stitching pseudo wire with different control work capabilities. So, what is the problem statement? The problem statement that we have uh, is uh, that we want to be able uh, to be able to send packets, uh, pseudo wire packets. Uh, Use the control board uh, also in a situation where uh, one, at least one of the TPE in the network is not capable to insert the control board. Uh, and this is uh, in, in an existing deployment network where we have this 
box is already in the network and it's sending traffic to another TPE. And even if the TPE one is not able to send a control word, uh, we want to be able to make sure that the packet that goes through the network uh, gets the control word. Uh, this is motivated by the <clears throat> draft that has been recently accepted, uh, uh, approved, uh, which is recommended to use a control word, uh, <clears throat> but uh, it's not possible to insert a control word uh, if TP1 cannot do that. And uh, one option that was discussed at the time when we developed the draft was replacing the old piece of equipment, uh, which uh, is uh, a possible solution. People can do that, but it's not always viable. Sometimes there are uh, um, um, operational or economical reasons why the operator don't want to replace an old piece of equipment, uh, which is already installed in the network. And uh, we don't preclude this option, but we want to provide an alternative option that uh, can be used in case the operator doesn't want to replace the old piece of equipment, but still protect the traffic uh, through the network. So what is the idea? The proposal is to have a, a new type of node, which is a, a, a sort of switching PE, which is uh, capable to switch uh, an Ethernet pseudo wire segment uh, set up without the control word and an Ethernet pseudo wire segment, uh, which is set up uh, with the control word. And uh, if we may, if we may, if we deploy this SP very close to TP, we can uh, easily control the ECMP behavior between TP1 and SP1. If, for example, is a, is a link, is a collocated link, or is a small size network, so we can make sure that there is no ECMP here. So this traffic is not affected uh, by the, the lack of control word. And then before sending the traffic through the network, the control word is inserted by uh, uh, the SP. So, uh, so that's that's the idea is to set up a multi seven zero wire in this way, and uh, uh, this um, solution has limit minimum or no service disruption because you can uh, install this new box or upgrade an existing box with this new capability, set up a second an old a new multi seven zero wire through this SP, and then you can take the traffic. You you can use for example zero wire redundancy to move the traffic from the old pseudo wire, which was going through the network without a control board, to the new pseudo wire and then delete the old pseudo wire. So this could be done with the minimum interruption of the service. And uh, the assumptions we made in the draft is that uh, the capabilities of TP1 are the same, uh, no matter whether it is terminating a single seven pseudo wire or a multi seven pseudo wire, which are consistent with the RSC 6073 assumptions about what the TP can do. So this draft gets more in details about uh, how it works from a data plane perspective. So the TP1 generates packets without the control word. So we have the Ethernet frames with the LSP label and Epsilon wire label. And then when SP forwards the traffic based on the Epsilon wire label, in addition to swap the, the Epsilon wire label and decrement the TTL, is also inserting the, the control word in between the Epsilon wire uh, bottom of the stack and the Ethernet frame. So there is a change in the way the SP forwards the packet, but the way TP1 and TP2 sends and receive a zero wire packet are exactly the same as of today. So there is no impact, the, all the impact on the data plane are on SP1. There is no impact on existing devices in TP1 or in the P nodes. No upgrades is needed on the data plane on the other nodes. And then when we do this change of the forwarding, plane uh, of the data packets, we have an impact also on the way the SP1 can forward VCCV packets. And uh, uh, we have made some assumption in the draft to make uh, things more easier, because otherwise we get too, too many combinations to deal with. So we assume that uh, on the on the segment where we have the control word, uh, we always use a CC type under one, which is the default and mandatory mode in the VCCV RSC. So we can assume that uh, if TP2 supports VCCV, it should support TP, TP CC type 1. So what we need to do, we, we need to translate between different CC types that can be supported by TP1 into CC type number 1. And in a rough, we describe a translation for CC type 4 and translation for CC type 3. Do you have a question, Matthew? Yeah, I just got a question about actually yeah. the previous slide. Yeah. Um, are you doing a label swap and then inserting a control word yeah. in an already labeled packet? Yeah. Yeah. That's not like in zero our architecture to be able to do stuff like that. And I don't know if there's any chips that can do that. That looks more like uh, the old pop and push of TMPLS. Yeah, you've got to rebuild the stack, haven't you? Yeah, you've got to read, so it's a pop and a push. Really it's two pseudo wires being being stitched together, not yeah. one pseudo wire end to end. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the question is, do we need to formally update the architecture? I suppose we should at least say we're updating it. Well, for this one, yeah. very kind of corner case. Yeah, yeah indeed. indeed. Um, yeah. Why can't you just stitch? I mean, we've already got native service stitching in, in the architecture, yeah. and that's pretty much what this is, because you've got yeah. two. You're basically breaking it down to the Ethernet frame somewhere. You're, push, you're, pop, you're popping the label coming in. Yes. You're coming up with an Ethernet frame, and then you're pushing a, a, a label with a, with a you're pushing a control word and a label. Right. Yeah, which is exactly that. And, and there's lots of boxes can do that kind of thing today. We yeah. just do an internal sort of cross connect yeah. on the native ser service, and they're done. Yeah. Yeah. So it is. A, you're right. It's a native service. Yeah, which is already in the architecture. So I don't yeah. think we, we right. need to do that. Change the draft. Uh, if you just. Yeah, I think changing the draft to point to that example okay. in the architecture, so this is all you're actually doing. Yeah. So, so basically, this is not a switching, it's not a label swap. I mean, it's no, technically, it's not. It's a, it's a right. forward interpreter where there are two pseudo wires, one with the control word, one without the control word. And it's yep. just moving the traffic from, yeah. uh, from one to another. So you might do end to end. Way, yeah. yeah, well, yeah, well, that was kind of my, my yeah, question so is really the point yeah. of this. I yes. to get into, yeah, but you can because you can do Ethernet OAM on the Ethernet layer with CCM on that, so you don't you haven't lost any kind of end to end. Well, you can also do it with the, uh, with, with the TTL version. If, if no, because you're terminating the pseudo wire yeah. on yes, yes. the pseudo wire being traced out gets immunity, yeah, everything terminates. So that's the idea here is not to terminate, is to, in, is, you don't need to know the, the packet, the payload, and you just have to insert the control word as part of your forwarding. But, but why don't you just do CCM on the Ethernet layer? But between, between TP1 and TP2, mm -hmm. you can just put maps on TP1 and TP2. Yeah, yeah, you cannot do VCCV end to end then. Right. But, <coughs> yeah. That's not native. Right? Yeah. It's, it's true, it's not VCCV, but yeah. you're kind of, because you're, 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 you're popping the pseudo over anyway. But you lose well. You can do VCCV without control. Yeah. yeah, but not strictly because you because you're popping that pseudo wire label rather than swapping well, it. Yeah, so there's a question of which one of the, which is the worst of the two evils describing it one way or the other. Well, I think describing it as a swap is just not a it's not a swap right. it's not it's a, a swap, swap. yeah it's but yeah. once you say it is not a swap that means that sort of is terminated the pin trace routes everything terminates that right it is not end-to-end -end anymore the difference here is that since it's a switching PE, the pseudo wire is end-to-end -end, and just that intermediate uh, in the between and the switching PE you are inserting the control Yes, the, the the payload is really the only thing that's end to end. Yep. Yeah. So you said basically everything is terminated and you start it over again. So it actually looks more like a TPP in that case. Right? So I yeah. should sort of go up by that one, which is to say, is this a useful function? And if it's a useful function, then the rest of the, uh, we'll, we'll figure out how to make it yep. uh, work and then how to describe it. Okay. So that's really the key question, because if it's yep. not a useful function, then we should just stop it. Yeah, it's just kind of, I mean, to me, it's just kind of describing a, a use case of that native service stitching. Yeah. Being a co-author, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just presented with an interesting technical problem. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think we have to think about the end-to-end -end VCCV and the, the redundancy as well, because one issue is that we need to move the traffic away. So, so how do you... Right. So, I mean, it's I would true. continue go on under the premise that, yep. you know, let's find, figure out if people think this is a useful yes. function. Yes, exactly. Yes. Right? <laughs> and then we'll figure out how to solve it. How to describe. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And, okay, this, okay, as I said, you you can, you can teach, you can have this CC type 4 or 3. And here you assume only one. In the draft, we describe both 3 and 4, but in the slides, I presented only the 3 because it's the most complex one. So what you get here is also another strange, um, more complex uh, operations. 
So what you get, you, you swap the label, you decrement the TTL, and then you have to insert the ACH between the pseudo wire label and the uh, uh, IP header. And the channel type will be set based on the IP header uh, version field. And you do the same in the opposite direction. And the assumption here is that uh, the SPE should know the TTL distance to the, to the TPEs because the TTL is the discriminating factor that tells you tells the TSP whether the packets uh, being forwarded is an OIM packet or is a, a data plane packet. So the different operations should be based on the TP value of the pseudo wide label stack. Okay, then is uh, in this slide we analyze that uh, uh, and again no, no impact on TP1 and TP2. So the VVCCV packets generated and processed by TP1 and TP2 are exactly the same as uh, today. So only SP1 needs to be updated. And the signaling procedures is also the same. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the, the, we need to upgrade a little bit the protocol rules to be implemented by SP1. So SP1 should behave, should always behave as if the, uh, toward the pseudo wire segment as if the other pseudo wire segments as signaling control wall support. So if uh, TP1 not, uh, uh, advertise, uh, signals to SP1 no control word, but since SP1 can translate a control word, it can still negotiate as, as equal to one toward TP2. But of course, uh, toward TP1, it will negotiate C equal to zero because TP1 does not support the control word. And uh, it can be done, and then it does with label withdrawal or not, depending on the sequence of actions. Because it depends. sometimes it can start with C equal to one, and then it receives the C equal to zero and then withdrawn, or it can start from C equal to zero, depends on between this message, which this message, which one comes first. But the behavior is exactly the same as in the current RSCs. The only difference is that uh, no matter what the, C the, the CBT you receive from, from the other pseudo wire segment, you always try to negotiate the C equal to one because you can insert the control word. And the same applies uh, to the VCCV. So what the, the rules are, are a little bit different. So the behavior from a protocol perspective, uh, TP1 and TP2 cannot say the difference. Uh, but the rules in the, in, inside the box are slightly different. So in this case, what happens is that SP1 advertised to TP2, CC type 1, if and only if it is receiving from TP1 a CC type that it can translate into TP1, into CC type 1. And in the reverse direction, it is looking at CC type 1, because we are assuming here to use only CC type 1. If, if TP2 notifies uh, support of CC type 1, to SP1, then SP1 can notify TP1 supports of all the CC types it can translate. And in this slide, we are assuming that SP1 can translate between both three and four. So SP1 can notify TP1 both three and four, but if TP1 supports only two and three, then only CC type three will be used in this segment and CC type one in this segment. <coughs> So these are the rules. And the last rule is because uh, if TP1 supports uh, uh, three and four, but SP1 cannot translate uh, TCC type 4, then we want to make sure that uh, ACH-based CV types are not negotiated. So SP1 will not propagate support of, uh, will not notify support of ACH type, which is IP-less uh, BFD, for example, unless uh, it's able to translate between CC type 4 and CC type 1, because without control word, only CC type 4 supports uh, the IP-less. Okay, the solution in the rough is described uh, and uh, um, is describing one SP, but uh, the, the, the operation of the SP are quite generic and you can have a different deployment scenario. One deployment scenario can be when both TPs are not capable to support the control word. Then what you can do, you can insert two type of SP <coughs> like this one, that the SP one will generate, will insert the, the, the control word to the packets generated by TP one and the SP two will do the same for TP two. And then you make sure that uh, the, uh, the, net, the traffic through the network goes through between SP1 and SP2 as the control word. Or you can have a, a more complex scenario where you can have SP, regular SP in between uh, the TP and the SP that translate the control word. For example, if you have multiple networks where you are sure that there is no ECMP, and if you don't support the, T, the, the, the control word insertion, you can also put uh, your insertion of the control word a little bit further up in the network. It's just deployment uh, decisions. It's the, the, the behavior of the node is exactly the same as described in the draft. So it's just to show that we are not constraining the way the solution can be deployed. 
So a bit of history. We got this draft presented at the last ITF meeting. Uh, we we get a slot in the MPS working group, and we get uh, good uh, uh, comments from Iman Shu and Jeff. And uh, we are trying to address these comments in this draft in this version. We make it very. We are trying to make it more clear that uh, the uh, solution is for existing deployments where we have something already in the field, and we have all boxes which are not capable to insert the control word. And we still want to protect the traffic uh, from the wrong ECMP behavior because this is becoming an emerging uh, issue. The, another important point is that we are not going to change other P or P nodes. So the changes that we are proposing are limited in terms of uh, the, uh, how many nodes you have to upgrade. And uh, we got a question about the sequence number. Uh, looking at the draft solution, in the old version we didn't discuss. In the new version we discuss and we see that if people want to implement a sequence number, they may use it. Uh, and they can use the RSC4448. Of course, you will use sequence number between the nodes that insert and remove the control word. Okay, now, what is the next steps? Uh, okay, first of all is to validate what are the assumptions that we have. So important to understand how many devices do we have in the network uh, which do not are not capable to, to insert the control word. And this back to the question of Stuart. Is there a problem that we need to solve? and uh, whether they can support CC type and CV type and reconfigure TTL, which is in line with the RFC 6073. We are, of, of course, welcome uh, further comments and suggestions, like how to model it from an architectural perspective. And OK, we think the document was ready for working group adoption, but <laughs> let's see. <laughs> That's not what you told me when you asked for the slot. Yes. <laughs> you, you wanted to socialize it. Socialize, yes. OK, so not working group adoption. OK, OK. <laughs> well, working group adoption is a good starting point. Right? That's what he says. But when he asked for the, he asked for the objective for the slot was to socialize this. OK. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Working group adoption is always figured out on the list anyway. Uh, but uh, Matthew has more comments. Yeah, sorry. It's just, um, just a smaller comment first of all. There's a statement in the draft that this works with dynamic multi segment pseudo wise. I would, um, only if that SPE is actually a terminating P for the multi segment pseudo wire would this work because the whole point of a multi segment pseudo wire is you don't have to configure anything on the SPEs. They're auto discovered through BGP or auto advertised. You'll need to, to effectively um, configure an address on the SPEs, a prefix for that SPE. You shouldn't have, but here you have to configure the fact that for a given pseudo wire you have to do this, this yeah. extra function. So have yeah, so you'd have to have another BGP way of advertising that property in BGP saying you're, it's capable of doing it and that your far end is yeah. So I guess the, 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 the critical question is, um, is there a need to do this? And how much of this is, is uh, we need to do? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, like, I don't have a good idea of how many of those TPs are around that really don't, in hardware, support control word. Um, especially since you're saying, well, deploy an SPE one hop away that has this new function in it. Um, when actually pretty much all nodes out there also support configurable hashing. You could just hash on the label stack rather than all the doing going into the IP, you know, all the way into the payload. And again, you won't get ECMP on that last hop if you if you do that because it will just hash on the pseudo wire label. Yeah, well, Well, if, if I may, um, we know from the experience that's being um, encountered in the field that there are at least some networks that, that are running without the control word, right? Because, uh, and, and there's bad hashing going on for ECMP, which is why people are seeing Ethernet frames being delivered out of water, which is why we did the Ethernet control word draft in the first place. So, so I, I think it is evident that there is a problem out there. There are still implementations that are running without the control word, right? So, uh, you know, we, we, we have actual proof of that. But, but are those cases where you're getting 
undesired ECMP on the pseudowire or reordering of packets on the pseudowire? Are they really because the TP only the TPs don't support control word, or is it because the whole network doesn't support control word? I I believe from the experience that we've seen that the whole network is not using the control word. Right. So that's right. not really yeah, but is that because the TPs don't supported in hardware or is that because nothing in the network does because usually the network would all be deployed together and right that i don't know actually uh, there's a higher level question you keep saying they don't use the control word so it's, there's a third option which is that they have the capability they just don't turn it off yeah well that's what the prediction <coughs> office has said yes right that, yeah that was a yes and if you recall when we did the previous job there was objection to making it mandatory it yep. some equipment wouldn't do it. Yes. So the question is, does this address that set of equipment, or actually is that equipment so deeply embedded in the network something can help it? Throw it down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, is that uh, which chip? Are there any hardware? Uh, I don't know. You're, 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 strangely, you're the person who was most vociferous in saying uh, <laughs> that uh, we couldn't make it mandatory. Yes, I know, but we. Well, uh, not, not, not to personalize it, right? No, no, I. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, but this, in this specific solution, we need a, a chip that's going to do a line rate, uh, that is sort of our level of Yes. Oh, yeah, we think, yeah. There are, we think there are chips that could do that. Um, out there. We mostly do the network process that could do this operation. Yeah. Right, and mostly they import chips to the process. Yeah. Yeah, but you mentioned that's why my point is you're right. But is, as Stuart say, you have you need to have program or hardware, but only here. It's not something that is up. It's not an upgrade of the whole network. It's an upgrade of one system in the network. Can be an upgrade of an existing system. Can be a new system, but is is very self-contained change that you need to do. No, it's not because you have to you have to change the design of the network because you have to deploy. You, you, Normally, you'd have just a ton. Most segment pseudo are not that widely deployed, and in some mobile networks, and things have them and things, but they're not. In this case, you're you're saying, well, we have to. Normally, you'd have a, an NSP end to end between TP1 and yeah. TP2. Yeah. So you're saying I have to basically re redeploy my NSP mesh in this network with with an SP there and provision a, this this switching function or stitching yeah. function of, of these SPEs. So it's quite a significant redesign of of the network. Of the operation, oh, yes. Hang on a second, but normally they would go, they would go through a concentration point one on the way at the edge anyway. Yeah. Um, we still have to configure the tunnels. Yeah. So between the TP1 and SP1. If, Even if, if it's one half, we won't push the label, the tunnel label, if you're doing 10 and half half. Yeah. But you still have to have a tunnel. It's, it's only in certain kind of hub and certain kind of um, hub and spoke kind of kind of architectures that you get a lot of pseudo switching. It's not. It's not that, and, and I mean these TPEs. I mean, what are we really talking? We're not really talking about CP type devices. We're talking about things sitting at the edge of large service provider networks yeah. that are handing off. Yeah. You know, providing transport for some other service provider. So yeah. there's not a vast number of them. They're usually fairly powerful boxes and. Uh, and and they do get upgraded, and they you know because well, well, just that's, that's just because they've been SPE one, but TPE one is likely to be a cheap uh, box at the edge of the network. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's well, it, well, it could be, but what do you mean edge? Is peering point with another? I mean, I'm saying yeah. it, it may be a peering point with another provider, or it may be for for okay. Ethernet okay. transport. Yeah. Yeah. Quite often, that's yeah. right. that's what you have. It's not it's not necessarily, or it's. Um, it's not necessarily a, a small CPU. Yeah. If it's not running CPU, you know, pseudo wise necessarily out to the premises. Well, if it is a peering point, maybe it's, and I think this one is most likely the small one. Because if it's a peering point, is a big system, maybe yeah. more, have more flexibility, it could be able to insert the control word. I think it's, the problem is when you have a chip box that is, a small chip box that is, they put the widespread on the edge of your network, which is very expensive to upgrade. Right, well, right, like the cell tower or something. Yeah. 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 You're out of it's done, yeah. Right. right. Yeah. But yeah. Keep Sorry. in mind keep in mind that what's being labeled here as TP, TPE one um, is actually just a relabeling 
of what was a cheap PE that didn't support the control word. Yep. And the only reason we're calling it TPE one is not because it's a big TPE, it's just because it's a TPE in the architecture of multi-segment pseudo wire. Yep. Right. But but it's still really a cheap PE that doesn't support the control word. Well, the question is, are there sufficient Yeah. I mean, what, what I'm hearing is there needs to be more analysis on the actual the, the actual usefulness of this and how many you know how widespread is this problem? I mean, if we're talking about cell site routers that are going to get updated from like three G, four G to five G anyway, maybe this isn't something to solve. I don't know of any other TPEs that are that small that would not get upgraded. I mean, if you're thinking about like Ethernet servers, think TPE, not TPE. But you just said that the TPE was yeah, a cheap yeah. box. A PE is not a small cheap box. If it's Ethernet service, it's a larger PE, right? Yeah. In the case of a cell site router, you're pretty much going to rev it when you rev the base station, which is what we're going through right now. So, is there another use case that would demonstrate that this thing is going to stick around forever? Well, yeah, well, hang on a second. The, the, the 3G or 4G stuff's going to stay around for a while. The, the 4G, the LTE stuff will stick around for a while. I'd, I'd make okay. assertions that the 3G stuff is already being turned over. Okay. And when you do that, I mean, in some cases, the box is actually built into the base station. Yeah. So it's going to get turned over as a matter of course. Is there another use case, though? You know, is there some IoT thing? What? I'm sorry, Uma? 3G is not the sort of as an IP software. Well, no, it's all ATM, but then we're not talking about Ethernet. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think Stuart was referring to like the HSP. Yeah. Now, um, I, I, I have a question for, for Hamanchu. You know, Hamanchu, uh, previously you've argued that there's old equipment out there that's hard to upgrade. And w what's the particular use case that you have in mind when you make that argument? Well, well um, for example, when, when we had the discussion on the control word draft, um, you made the point that, uh, you know, that we can't just mandate that everyone upgrade to use the control word mm. because there's equipment out there that can't be upgraded. Right. Yes. And so I want you just what's the use case that you had in mind in terms of the that equipment that can't be upgraded to use the control word? So to I mean, from my experience purposes. Yes, exactly. Uh, we have deployed a lot of uh, mobile wireless backhauls mm -hmm. and they are all using MPLS TP. So we use uh, CC type four. So we don't have this issue at all, as far as the control word and all those things are concerned. Um, I think one of the, if you do have, if you, I mean, if you have boxes, uh, small side, cell side, like uh, Matthew, and this is, uh, it is true for mobile wireless backhaul, at the cell side, you have uh, cheap uh, access boxes, which uh, which doesn't have a lot of CPU and the memory and all that stuff. You they may if that if that hardware does not support the control word you you know you don't have you can't upgrade them to uh you will just have to swap out the box which uh which supports the control word so this, so this will give you that avenue Ooh, wow. <laughs> so, 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 Stuart. so that would address that situation the, the, the question we need to ask is, is that situation likely to resolve itself um, due to a 5G upgrade sufficiently soon that we don't need to worry about it? Or is that problem likely to, may, to, to continue, in which case elements of this would be useful work? So uh, again, from my experience perspective, I said, you know, we, we have deployed large deployed networks for mobile wireless backhaul. But we use the MPLS TP. We are, you know, we don't have this uh, issue of c 
control word. Now, when we when but this it, box is because MPSP glass, doesn't have ECMP, that's why you don't have this issue. So, sorry, you mentioned that you don't have this issue because of MPLSTP. That's because MPLSTP is not using ECMP. No, MPLS. We are using Galgatch, okay. right? Okay. We use the C tire CC. So there is no intermediate boxes that looks beyond the okay. last label okay. and. Uh, okay, there is no ECMP in MPLSTP. Yeah, I yeah. see. Yeah. So, so you don't have this problem. We yeah. don't have this uh, problem yeah. in our networks. But uh, to stewards, uh, you know, if we are upgrading to five G. Uh, you know, there will be newer boxes, of yeah. course, uh, and then, yeah, which which would have uh, which would have this control word capability. I mean, our newer boxes all support control word. But, 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 uh, to, to, just just to clarify one thing, again, I thought MPLSTP required the control word. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, so we don't have a problem in any MPLSTP network. Exactly. For, for two reasons. It doesn't ECMP on you, and it always has the control word. That's my point. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that That's precisely what I was saying, is that, you know, in, in our deployed networks, we do not have this problem because we are using Galgatch. So, I'm, 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 not, even, oh, I'm sorry, not, not even sure in these networks is that, that you get a whole lot of true multi-path ECMP. It's all like link bundling. And... And in that, if you really want to control the way that you do spraying across the links, you hash on the pseudo I label. You're not just deep going all the way into the packet. So this is not, and so this is not going to solve a problem really there, because there you do want to do hashing across across the links in a bundle. Uh, um, but you configure the network so that it hashes correctly. I, I think this. Um, Ignas, right? Yes. Ignas was the one yeah. who uh, who actually put this problem on the table that he's seeing a lot. He's seeing a lot of uh, yeah. networks yeah. where uh, the, the out of sequence uh, packets are happening yeah. because. And then we got a letter from IEEE that if you don't fix this problem, we're not going to assign the the, the MAC at right. the start the rack, zero right, four. Right. But those, the those networks are not listening. No, those net, the networks, I, if I'm not mistaken, the examples that they were giving were more like enterprise Ethernet services and like data center interconnect, not not places where you have cheap, dumb TPEs that you don't want to throw away. Yeah, yeah, those, they, those, those, those kind it. of examples were not, the boxes can't possibly be upgraded to use the control word. They were just the software doesn't support control word. In so, yeah, so I mean, I think, I think at this point, I don't know what I'm hearing is that there, there does need to be some more analysis on exactly what is the use cases for this and is it likely that we would need to do an augmentation of the protocol to handle and even the architecture to handle this or are there other solutions that already fall within the architecture that will get us through so, yeah I mean so we can just so, so if we don't the change the architecture well, yeah, the and question. if you just do the as two pseudo wires, but then you don't have the native right. of a VCCV OAM. And a lot of this complexity disappears. And a lot of all this complexity disappears, yeah. But then, yes, you have pseudo wire termination at the midpoint. But, but it facilitates the original goal is that if you have a network with, uh, uh, do, which is looking below the pseudo wire for the ECMP traffic, you will solve that problem. Yes. So, so the question is, uh, my view is, how many of this TP do we really have in the network, which cannot be upgraded? Because I think well, I, that in what cases too? Yeah. I mean, yeah. What are the like Matthew was getting at? What, yeah. So, you may have a lot of them that can't get upgraded, but then I mean, are you also in a situation where you're you're consolidating them back to a single point? Yeah. Because even if you're not. Mm -hmm. Right, then you don't really have a choice. You have to go upgrade them anyway, because the topology is not going to. If the topology isn't more hub and spoke like, you're not going to have a situation where you can upgrade one node and get away with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, kind of need to look at both things. Like where, because I mean, it's it's not just the TPE can't be upgraded. Usually, it's case so I don't want to upgrade that yeah. because there's so many of them. But then again. Is the topology such that I have a central point to, back, to bring them up? Well, I can convert. deploy this new network, yeah. I see. Okay. But this is Stuart. I think probably the right thing to do is that the authors should write a summary of the discussion that happened here, put it to the list, and ask 
which is essentially of two approaches we should adopt, which is to continue this piece of work or simply write a short note, uh, which may or may not be an RFC, that says if you build a pair of stitched pseudo wires, then you can address this problem. But you can't solve the OAM uh, into an OAM. Yeah. And, yeah. Give, and get the working group and then decide what it wants to do. Yeah, uh, Stuart, just a question. Uh, with, without VCV, also you have to think about how do you move the traffic away? Maybe it's again, because you have the traffic is already going through this old zero wire. And if you do a multi sem zero wire here, you can you can do zero wire redundancy. With, with stitching, you can't, you don't get those properties. But we yeah. should describe the properties of this, and yeah. the properties of the alternate on a list or maybe a draft if it's more than a uh, more than a page, and then ask the working group which way it wants to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. No, also, the pseudo wire status signaling. If we were to do the yeah two pseudo wires, yeah. uh, I think the pseudo wire status signaling you can move forward because I think there is some forward. You can take some pseudo wire status from here and move it from here if you stitch as a native service. I, if I remember well, this is possible. There is that OAM interworking. Yes, but exactly. That's for the Ethernet native. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but to be honest, I think quite often with these if you, with these small cheap t TPEs that you've got here, you quite often don't have dual homing from them anyway. You might have link aggregation going no. as an uplink, but that's, so, that's it. Yeah. So let, let me let me add on to that because in the architectures that we've done, for example, in the broadband forum where we we utilize this uh, this stuff. The idea was that you didn't do dual homing from a cell site gateway because if it died, the two adjacent cells are going to pick up anyway, and yeah, they didn't exactly. need to add the cost into the box, yes, yeah. right? The, the backhaul cost is too high. Yeah. The backhaul yeah. cost was too high. In in some cases too, where you'd have dual homing, it, it, you know, say it was a, a macro site aggregator. Well, all right, then you would dual home to two PEs, but that's not going to solve this problem. That you're going to need two of these SPEs to solve that problem. Yeah. It's cheaper. In other words, it's cheaper to update the cell site gateway to, can, to support the control word, right? Than it is to put two SPEs in that support the control yeah. word. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to end it here because Atella was actually um, yeah. up uh, on the tease agenda soon. <laughs> so so Atello has it has to rush over. To tease, but one thing I would like to add is that uh, you know there was a question as to whether we should hold the session or just put this draft on the on the MPLS agenda. But I think it it really got the attention it deserves from the right people in the room by by holding the meeting. So I'm, uh, so I'm really glad that we did, and uh, we'll continue this online and and depending on the way the discussion goes on the list, we'll see whether or not we need a meeting at the next IETF. Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Yeah. I have a question for you. Captured as much as I could. So that summary that you were just talking about, oh. having the authors do, hopefully they can pull a good amount of that. You know what? I'll clean this up before I upload it. Do it as a summary. It might make sense to do it as a, an RFC that uh, updates. For like an applicability draft. Yeah. yeah. So it's a question I had. Well, that'd, that'd be a good choice too. Can I have dinner with your camera? Oh, um, that's a good question. Because right now I think I'm.
the wide open. Good. I'm okay. wide open. I, I, okay. So let me see. Playing, I think, is Wednesday.